Welcome to another episode of Parents of Patriots with me, your host, Lisa Logan. At the end of the last video, we talked about how a great deal depends on who is defining terms like equitable and inclusive and how they plan to measure them. We run into a real problem with this when it comes to social emotional learning and specifically the organization CASEL. Today's video is all about them and I hope it gets you to realize that the new brand of social emotional learning is not the helpful tool it appears to be. Let's jump in. CASEL stands for the Collaborative for Academic Social and Emotional Learning. They are the organization that sets the five core competencies or standards seen there in that color wheel by which all SEL programs are measured against. In fact, CASEL rates SEL programs based on the implementation of those standards they set, and many states won't even adopt SEL programs that aren't CASEL approved. CASEL said on their website that, quote, SEL competencies can be leveraged to develop justice-oriented global citizens and nurture inclusive school and district communities, end quote. If you've watched the first two videos in this series, the words justice-oriented and global citizens should already be raising red flags. In the first video in this series, we talked about outcomes-based education, and as OBE splintered until parental backlash in the 1990s, social-emotional learning proponents salvaged the key ideas of it and continued to advance the social engineering agenda. So in the 1990s, we saw a blossoming of SEL activity. Much of that was due in part to the publishing of a book by Daniel Goleman called Emotional Intelligence, which is to some considered the Bible for social-emotional learning. The organization CASEL was founded in 1994 by Goleman and educator philanthropist Eileen Rockefeller Grewald to promote social and emotional learning or SEL, which again they define as, quote, the process through which children acquire the skills to recognize and manage emotions, develop caring and concern for others, make responsible decisions, establish positive relationships, and handle challenging situations effectively, end quote. It's important to note that Eileen Rockefeller Grewald is the daughter of David Rockefeller, who was mentioned as being one of the architects of the transformed education system that was floated in the Dear Hillary letter we talked about in the first Sinister SEL video. That letter, which was sent to Hillary Clinton by Mark Tucker a week after her husband was elected president, outlined how schools and the workplace could be forcibly united to implement a national human resources development scheme. It urged the Clinton administration to take over the entire U.S. educational system with the goal to train children in specific jobs to serve the workforce and the global economy instead of just to educate them so that they could make their own life choices. You may remember that social-emotional learning was always a formal part of Mark Tucker's ideal system and that President Clinton did in fact advance that proposed agenda by signing laws that restructured the public schools to do just that. Another board member I've mentioned is Dr. Linda Darling-Hammond. You may remember her name from the sinister SEL video about Common Core. She was an Obama education advisor and transition team leader who was well known in progressive education circles for her advocacy of educational equity. And she was a co-author of the federally funded Smarter Balanced Assessment Consortium or SBAC to test the Common Core standards. CASEL has always promoted these wonderful sounding five core competencies and standards designed to help students with coping skills and to build healthy relationships. And then something happened in 2020. Amidst the chaos of the global pandemic and racial riots, CASEL quietly updated their five core competencies as well as their definition of social emotional learning. What changed? They changed their definition to be transformative social emotional learning which is social-emotional learning done through an equity lens. They state, CASEL is refining a specific form of SEL implementation that concentrates SEL practice on transforming and equitable settings and systems and promoting justice-oriented civic engagement, which we are calling transformative SEL. This form of SEL is aimed at redistributing power to promote social justice through increased engagement in school and civic life. Translation, they want to use transformative SEL to incorporate your students into a larger mission of long-term social justice activism with teachers and administrators acting as community organizers. To quote Castle, the concept of transformative SEL is a means to better articulate the potential of SEL to mitigate the educational, social, and economic inequities that derive from the interrelated legacies of racialized cultural oppression in the United States and globally. 
Transformative SEL represents an as-yet underutilized approach that SEL researchers and practitioners can use if they seek to effectively address issues such as power, privilege, prejudice, discrimination, social justice, empowerment, and self-determination. So instead of these SEL programs focusing on unity to achieve equality in the classroom, they instead want to achieve equity by resurrecting racism, pushing the narratives of white supremacy and white privilege, and promoting the notion, and I quote, racialized oppression was foundational to the establishment of the United States. Sounds a little 1619 project to me. See, equality and equity are not the same thing. Equality asserts that all men are made equal, not that all men should be made equal. Their definition of equity teaches that you should treat people unequally, like taking the box away from the tall boy and giving it to the short one, to make them have equal outcomes and correct the systemic structural racism that critical race theorists believe is in every facet of the United States. The focus is on the race-based redistribution of wealth and power, a kind of identity-based rather than class-based Marxism. This, ladies and gentlemen, is critical race theory, which transformative SEL promotes the tenets of. Critical race theory is a Marxist ideology that asserts that race is a social construct or something that's made up in society used to exploit people of color. Critical race theorists hold that racism is inherent and exists in all the institutions and systems of the United States. They believe those institutions and systems function to create and maintain social, economic, and political inequalities between whites and non-whites, especially African Americans. And if you're a white person, because you exist and thrive within this racist institutional or structural framework, then you believe you naturally want to keep the status quo, have implicit bias, and are racist toward people of color. That's why the schools have to teach children these principles through SEL, because white parents can't be trusted to raise their kids to not be racist. It is because of this assertion that Castle has shifted towards transformative SEL. They believe that if SEL is taught without acknowledging that black students exist in a culture of systemic racism, then they say that social emotional learning becomes essentially, and this is their words, white supremacy with a hug. SEL's new focus is to be a lever for equity, their definition, which is equal outcomes, and social change. In fact, during the 2019 Castle SEL exchange in Chicago, speaker Dina Simmons says just that. So in closing, I would say for this work to happen, we have to apply an equity lens. Actually, you know what? We just have to start seeing what it is. We don't like to say what it is because we don't like to talk about race in this country. We cannot heal our wounds if we don't tend to them. So we need to apply an equity and an anti-racist lens. So I leave you with one question, which is, how can we leverage SEL to create the social change that we need? That is not a question for you to, not just to ponder, but this is an action plan for you. What is your action plan to ensure that we leverage SEL to create the social change we so desperately need? While some might see the terms anti-racist and social change as positive terms, to these critical race theorists, they have different meanings. The term anti-racist isn't defined as what you probably think it is, which is not racist, because of course all of us would agree that that's a good thing. In their eyes, simply being not racist does not require active resistance to and dismantling of the system, which they feel is set up and operates in such a way to purposely oppress people of color. Being anti-racist does, and they want to use SEL to turn your children into social justice activists toward that cause. All right, so we're going to play a quick game of who wrote it, Karl Marx or Castle. The quote is, Dominant U.S. cultural norms promote materialism or acquisitive individualism, an orientation associated with health problems and unethical behavior. These norms are even more problematic when wealth and whiteness are conflated and uncritically accepted as indicators of success. This fosters a sense of white racial entitlement and dominance, as well as negative biases and stereotypes about people of color and those from low-income backgrounds. Any guess who wrote those awful words? I bet you guessed that it's Castle, and you're right, it is. 
but it could very well have been Karl Marx with his hatred of capitalism in addition to its racism toward white people. It's actually from a Castle white paper where they break down the problems with the existing five core competencies of SEL and discuss how they can shift the way they teach them to be through an equity lens. This particular part of the paper was about self-awareness and how they can use that competency to funnel kids into a racial and critical consciousness. Besides reading their white papers, you can also learn a lot about an organization when you follow the money and the people and organizations which it's funded by. Castle gets most of its money from lots of liberal organizations with very radical agendas, which you can see here. Not surprisingly, two of their top funders are the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. If you haven't yet, you should start asking yourself why big tech wants data on the social and emotional learning skills of your children. We will talk much more about that later, but I want to remind you that our friend here, Mr. Gates, was also heavily involved in the effort to get Common Core into our education system. In fact, many of the same organizations and people who are part of that initiative are also central in the push for social emotional learning, and this is no coincidence. I won't get into these other organizations at Fun Castle right now, but as you know, with money come influence, and it's obvious that there's a very left-leaning agenda here. Since Castle is the standard bearer of SEL, they put out a program guide which reviews and rates SEL programs and divides them into three tiers, depending on how well these programs align with Castle's framework. Of course, the 2021 edition of their program guide is based on revised criteria that reflects CASEL's updated definition of transformative SEL and rewards programs that integrate SEL with academics, promote equity, support adult SEL so they can indoctrinate the teachers, etc., with their highest designation of being a CASEL Select program. Here are the 48 programs that meet all of that criteria. You should probably make sure that the one implemented at your child's school isn't on that list, and if it is, do your homework and find out what it is teaching your child. Even if you don't have a program that's on this list, I would still ask your child how SEL is being taught to them by whoever is facilitating it, especially since Castle invited leaders from the National Equity Project to train their SEL educators on how to break the rules and become rebel leaders who can utilize SEL in service of racial equity and social justice. So this is again, just to connect some dots, which is this idea of rebel leadership is about taking the risk. It's about getting into good trouble. It's about really stepping back and noticing and reflecting. There are rules or constraints. Who are they serving? And what would it look like to break the rules in service of what we know our young people need? Um, and we believe that rebel leaders really utilize SEL in a way that serves healing, that thinks of self-care as, as resistance and resisting oppression. That's about the collective, not just about the individual. Um, and that really starts to reimagine and redistribute power so that we're co-designing what we what we create, what go what we go forward with is what our young people and our families and our communities, our teachers, we get together. Um, and it's not something that a leader goes off in a room or even a leadership team, but that we do it shoulder to shoulder with people who are most impacted by whatever the policy or practice is. So there's an opportunity to advance justice and humanize our communities. Um, and it, it's going to take rebel leaders because the rules are not set up to, you know, the system was not designed with time in it to redesign it. And so it's going to require rebel leaders to step out and take some risks. Um, to be clear, to do that together is social solidarity and support one another's leadership. We would love for you to um, share a tweet if you're on Twitter with the hashtag rebel leader and just share your moves, share what you're doing so that we can continue to create social solidarity among people really committed to reimagining a different future and not, not accepting the rules as they're currently written, but writing ourselves some new rules that puts our wellness and our shared humanity at the center. The truth of the matter is that the subjects in social emotional learning like identity, empathy, and perspective taking can be manipulated by whoever is teaching it to elaborate into any of the critical theories of identity, like gender or critical race theory, and then be used to encourage students to be allies for social and racial justice issues. Hopefully your teacher isn't a hashtag rebel leader 
because these are probably not the social emotional skills you're looking for. I hope what I've covered today has been helpful and informative. And of all the other videos I've put out so far, I feel it is extremely important to share this one. Share it with your friends and family so they know to either take a look at their SEL program or to opt out. Share it with your school board members so they know when a company comes in wanting to have your district implement its curriculum, they know to look at it with more scrutiny if it aligns with CASEL's framework. Share it with your legislators. They need to know that CASEL's new transformative SEL is a Trojan horse for critical race theory and basically is identity, Marxism, and social justice activism being taught to our children in the schools. In my next video, I'll cover how it, it is social emotional learning's aim to reprogram our children and how those behind it want to create a global citizenry through technology-based global curriculum and assessments. If you want to know when that video comes out, just click the bell icon and you'll be notified when I post new content. Don't forget to also like this video and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, I'm Lisa Logan.